Yeah, so hello everyone and welcome to um, IABM panel session. I'm very uh, delighted to have Bluefish and, and also IDEO um, today with us to, to discuss um, about a wide range of topics, uh, specifically uh, sports related projects uh, in Asia Pacific region. Uh, welcome everyone to the panel. So um, we could start um, a little bit by uh, a short introduction. Um, firstly, could you kindly um, introduce yourself and, and also your organization? We could start from you, Craig, please. Okay, hi, I'm Craig Mott, the Managing Director of Bluefish 444. I've been, uh, Bluefish has been in the industry and operating for 20 years. I've been to 20 consecutive IBC and NAB trade shows. Bluefish 444 is best known as an uncompressed SDI video card manufacturer. We've deployed about 28,000 cards total uh, in the history of our operations. Uh, for SDI, we support the SMPT standards from HD to 12 gig 4K. We have new interfaces coming on the next generation of product called uh, called Kronos, and we will be supporting the SIMPTI IP standards and HDMI. Um, we also have a range of uh, standards converters, mini converters as well called Synapse. So we make our video cards. Uh, we have many IABM industry software partners who, are, who have adopted our software development kit to make Bluefish cards compatible with their software. And that includes companies like VizRT, Kyron Higo, Brainstorm, Ross Video, VRI from Korea, Metis, MediaLux, more than 50 software developers uh, in total support our video cards and it ranges, the workflows that we support range from broadcast graphics, production, QC and compliance, post-production, video streaming, digital intermediary and any other ingest and play out workflows. We have also written our own plugins to our cards and we support uh, tools from Adobe, Avid, Assimilate, Casper CG, the Unity render engine, and we're also writing a plugin for the Unreal engine, render engine as well, game engine, working with our cards. So that's, that's our cards and the software and the workflows that work with our cards. Over the last five years, we have reoriented the business slightly to also be simultaneously a software developer. And we have developed our own software called Ingestor for production and archive workflows. And that software runs exclusively on Bluefish cards. In, the product's called Ingestor and it will capture simultaneous SDI and NDI video, video channels. It will encode them real time to uh, codecs and formats for, for broadcast post archive streaming. So a wide range of workflows there and, and simultaneously we'll be, we are able to use uh, Avid Media Composer and Adobe Premiere to do the live edit of the files while they're being recorded, while they're simultaneously being recorded. That's called growing files or edit while record. So we've added, we've added that to our, um, we've added that to our um, product offerings, our repertoire of product offerings. And what's very interesting about the Ingestor workflow is that it's an alternative workflow to, to the traditional recording workflow with appliances that record to a file to an appliance. It's generally got a removable flash drive. So we have to wait, the customer has to wait for the record to finish, remove the flash drive, put the flash drive into their network storage and copy all the files across. Our workflow with Ingestor that we've worked with Ideal on, we can immediately record directly to the network storage and start editing it. And it makes the workflow a lot more efficient. Now, uh, we can, we can, you can go to the IABM shop window and research this product. Uh, you, you can, if you, if you search via growing files or edit while record or broadcast graphics or any of those other workflows I mentioned, you will, you will learn a lot about Bluefish products. We took the time to optimize um, our, our listing with the IABM and it's a very commendable uh, search engine that, that, they, that you have there for the 1300 manufacturers or participants that are in the broadcast industry. Okay, so that's me. Great, thanks. That's Bluefish. Very interesting. Uh, then, um, yeah, Updash, 
would you like to describe okay uh, i'm uh, ubdish uh, director of technology uh, ideal systems uh, i am uh, based in uh, kuala lumpur malaysia uh, i play two roles uh, one is a head of uh, ideal systems uh, malaysia office and also as the technology solution architect for ideal southeast asia uh, focusing more on uh, broadcast technologies uh, both uh, legacy and uh, and uh, future road maps so things like uh, move to ip cloud technology iot those kind of things uh, other other focus areas uh, that uh, we also dwell into are things like uh, live production uh, professional uh, av uh, which looks into areas such as hospitality hospital system conference uh, conference room conference system huddle rooms uh, those kind of things uh, 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 uh do, you, do you want some background into uh, the ideal group i think i think that will be better done by pinter yes please pinter could you complement up the description of um ideal systems and, and also yourself please sure hi uh, i'm fenton i'm responsible for ideal in southeast asia um uh, ideal uh, group is a system integrator uh, in the media space um, uh, started in the broadcast space, been operating for 30 years. Um, so we we operate uh, across Asia Pacific region. Um, I think we have 13 offices in 11 countries, um, and we have various people in other countries as well. So that's always a bit of a a gray area where where we where we're all based. Um, essentially, the the business is. Uh, um, between broadcast and, and the pro AV um, space. And then our broadcast division um, has, uh, as Updesh alluded to, a live sports capacity as well, which I think we're going to talk about later in this. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we've got a few hundred staff across Asia. Uh, we work uh, on the broadcast side. We work with all the main broadcasters in Asia. Um, and, you know, we're, as a systems integrator, um, you know, we are heavily involved in the design of solutions. So um, we, we tend to operate on uh, the, the more kind of solution side of broadcast. Um, so we're not really, uh, you know, we're not really uh, a, a box shifter type. We're really kind of systems design, systems architects and, right. and, and uh, deployment of that. Um, Within our group, then we've got various skill sets that support both the the AV and the live sports, and also the the broadcast divisions. And that uh, in in that kind of gives us some inherent strength. So we have got software development in house. Um, we've got a team called Ideal Media Works that uh, develops software where we're developing um, our own IP for the cloud space. Um, which we're uh, launching this year and rolling out with some customers at the moment. Um, and uh, we also have um, the uh, interior design division. So a, a lot of what we do when we build new broadcast facilities uh, for broadcasters involves building of studios, building of control rooms and so on. So um, we actually do those designs in-house. Um, so our interior designers work with our uh, technical team to make master control rooms very, uh, very slick. So um, we've, we've got these uh, internal departments, you know, cloud departments, software departments, interior design um, that loosely support the, the AV, uh, the broadcast and, and the live business. Okay, interesting, very diverse. Uh, range of, of services. Um, then we have Tom. Uh, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, even though Craig already um, talked more about your company, please? Sure. So uh, my name is uh, Tom Lifko, and I'm the product manager at Bluefish 444. So I work uh, collaboratively with uh, with Craig as the managing director, and I also work with the engineers uh, here, here at Bluefish uh, to develop the new products, to enhance the existing products and keep those those products up to date. I also uh, work with the industry partners. So uh, 
ideal system, for example. Uh, we, we maintain the relationships between uh, system integrators, resellers, and uh, distribution network. So that's, that's my role at Bluefish. I can actually show you some of the uh, products that Craig mentioned earlier. So this is the uh, Synapse Converter, which I believe has been uh, deployed as well by uh, Ideal Systems and uh, the Kronos card that Craig mentioned before. So this is the next generation Bluefish card, which features eight channels of uh, video IO. Yeah, great. Um, thanks. Um, Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, great. So um, next, um, a few words about um, the coronavirus um, situation and um, has it ha I mean, has the coronavirus outbreak had an impact on your business specifically? Uh, Craig, what would you say? What would I say? Well, yes, it has directly. Um, we have, we've just produced two very good case studies in January, February timeframe. They were both live sport. One was with a company called Champion Data here in Melbourne, and they do live sports graphics and sports analytics for the Australian Football League. And another was with a company called Segev Sport in Israel, who do the same, exactly the same thing for uh, basketball throughout uh, Europe and Asia. And that's all sort of stopped. So that's on hold. There's no way to sugarcoat that. That, that just means that uh, they can't offer their service, so we can't sell to them. So that, that's been a problem uh, in the production and live events aspect of the market. But there has been an opportunity, and it revolves around mobile productions and remote workflows. So talking before about our NGS store product, um, we are releasing a feature. We have already have one customer having deployed it whereby uh, if they have a VPN back to their office, they can be on their web browser now. So Updesh could be on his web browser. He could be controlling a jest or back in his office or back in the studio and getting it to, getting it to record and, uh, um, and encode remotely. So that's one one innovation that's sort of come about in these times that that's forcing people to think about that workflow. And the other one is working from home with a mobile system. So instead, our products have typically been used in workstations or servers at the facility. So instead of having a workstation or a server there, people are working from home with a laptop and Thunderbolt expansion chassis. So Bluefish cards, all of them will go in a, a Thunderbolt expansion chassis from Sonnet or One Stop Solutions Magna, NetStore or Akatio. And you have the expansion chassis connected to the laptop and on the laptop you're running an Avid Media Composer or Adobe Premiere and, and, and working that way. And then streaming your, streaming your, your content. So... I guess that, that's what's come about as a result of the coronavirus for us. Very interesting. Actually, my next question would have, um, I mean, would have concerned innovations, but it was great that you already um, provided some, some concrete examples. Uh, what about Ideal, um, Updesh uh, and Finton? How has the coronavirus impacted your uh, business and company? Um. In terms of uh, direct business impact, uh, I would say yes, but uh, the actual impact has yet to show. But uh, immediately, I would say there is a disruption to business process. So, for example, uh, uh, people not having the ability to be on site to to continue doing uh, projects or, or even support. Uh, in terms of uh, other projects, uh, uh, we, do, we do not see any uh, major cancellation, but most of them have been uh, postponed. Okay, postponed to probably when things get better. Uh, this again creates a, a domino effect where 
once things start to recover, everyone will start to request uh, simultaneous people on site. Okay, so this will there will be some impact uh, which needs uh, some form of uh, uh, managing, I guess. Yeah, I, I think um, the corona impact here has, has been a, a ripple effect. Um, so our operations in China, so we, we have three offices in China. Um, we're also in Taiwan and Hong Kong. So we were impacted very early and our, our Chinese operations got locked down very early. Um, yeah, on right today, we're still locked down in India. We're still locked down here in Singapore and Malaysia is just coming out of lockdown. So this has been this ripple effect over time of what's been locked down um, and what hasn't been locked down. So, um, so it, it, again, across all of Asia, yes, an impact, but the timings are, are, are somewhat different. Um, interestingly, uh, because China locked down first because they manufacture a lot of equipment, we've had some manufacturers, uh, not Bluefish, I may add, but we've had some manufacturers contacting us that they're unable to make certain components because they've run out of components that are coming from China. Um, and, you know, from a North American perspective, we've now seen factories that are shut in North America because of lockdown. Uh, and China is now able to produce, uh, but we've got shipping issues as well. So we've also seen with the uh, effective closure of airspace, so you take India's airspace is entirely closed. So logistics have been uh, dramatically affected. Uh, uh, air freight prices, so any deals that we had priced already, uh, I, you know, we now have to refactor uh, air freight. Um, so uh, uh, all electronic equipment and, and uh, high value equipment flies. We don't, we don't put it in containers or ships. It takes too long and it's uh, too high value a product to put on a ship. Um, uh, shipping has been, you know, the actual ships have been affected. They're in port. Uh, the air volume is much lower. We've seen, for example, shipping uh, per kilo prices out of uh, China to Singapore, as a, as a direct example, um, double uh, in the last three months per kilo. Um, so you're going to see you know, component uh, uh, prices increasing in the short term um, and supply chain difficulties because manufacturers, certainly in Europe and the US, who kept running longer, used up just in time uh, components and then closed down and then you've got the factory. So there's, there's this whole disjointed time effect because of the ripple timeline of, of COVID. Um, and then in terms of the business, uh, it's been a case of, of positives and negatives. We've had certainly projects that have uh, uh, either slowed down or stopped because we, we were locked down and couldn't deliver. And then we've seen other projects that have been um, uh, basically generated by COVID, people moving uh, to cloud-based workflows for disaster recovery or for business continuity. Um, and uh, in the AV space, we've seen a massive uptake in companies wanting to uh, launch uh, video conferencing uh, capacities so that they can do things like this with uh, other companies without meeting face to face uh, because it's actually illegal here in Singapore at the moment to go and have business meetings face to face. Um, but also um, that they can enable uh, home working staff for safety as well. Um, so, you know, on, that's been a positive on the AV side. Obviously a negative on the AV side is uh, um, specific sectors. Um, travel and tourism, so the hospitality sector, they've been very strong for us. We've been doing a lot of AV uh, systems um, in uh, Indonesia and Bali, uh, very strong uh, hospitality sector there last year. And at, at the start of this year, we had a strong order book. Um, so the hospitality sector and, and, and the tourism sector have been devastated. So anybody kind of selling into those markets, uh, we're obviously seeing the airlines uh, getting gutted uh, in the financial markets. And we're seeing companies like Hertz borderline chapter 11 on car rental because they can't make their payments because they're not renting their cars. So, you know, it, it, this is this is very piece by piece. And uh, I think on the broadcasters themselves, um, you're starting to see, and again, it, it depends on the particular makeup of uh, individual customers or broadcasters. Anybody with live sports is in big trouble. So that that's your people like Fox Sports, uh, BN Sports, uh, 
uh, ESPN, part of Disney. So, you know, without, without those sporting events go, getting started and without those revenues coming in, they're going to uh, have, have already suffering majorly. Uh, we're seeing that impact. Um, so, it, you know, it's, the, the, the impact of COVID is, is so uh, uh, universal, you know, from supply chain, from customers, from, from, from uh, sports to news to production, you know, produ you know movie production uh, has, had almost ceased, is now restarting. Uh, I read yesterday Netflix have already restarted productions in, in Taiwan, uh, Japan and Iceland. Um, so uh, if you speak any of those languages, you're in luck with uh, Netflix. Uh, in the coming months, but uh, so you know, it, it, it's a uh, they, there, there will be books on the on the damage and the timelines of of, of COVID. Uh, I think the important part for all of us in the in the broadcast business and and, and in, the, in the media business is trying to focus on where we can work, um, and that's very much what I the instruction I've been given to my team. Is is sell sell and work and deliver where we can on the projects that we can, uh, and let's not try and push things and push projects that we know are are are, are going to be either slowed or stopped. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Tom. How is your team managing? Um... Yeah, so that's actually a good segue from uh, what Pinton was saying before, I guess, because um, here at Bluefish, obviously, as Craig mentioned. Uh, a lot of the existing business with uh, some of our OEM integrations with sports and live events, right. uh, they're, they're very, very much affected. So that affects the whole, the whole thing through there. But there are aspects of the business that, that have um, still have the potential to continue or, or even actually looking at new aspects uh, that we have been working, uh, working towards over the last probably uh, five, six, seven years is, is into the pro AV market. So, um, there has been some um, uh, change in, in sort of priorities about uh, which projects we're prioritising, um, what, what sort of industry partners we're working with uh, more closely to basically um, access those, um, those, those technologies that are, are still able to function um, in, in these particular times. So, uh, Craig mentioned before that the ingestor server has some features that are enabling remote workflows. So that's right. a, a web web based uh, interface to control all of the functionality in, inside ingestor. We also have some new features that are coming down the line in future versions of ingestor, such as um, proxy records. So that, that would fit into kind of cloud based workflows where you might want to record multiple streams and uh, record a proxy file, which would get um, put it up into the cloud, people can access that and start to edit those um, from in a proxy workflow um, via, via a cloud connection. So that's again um, feeding into that. There's also sort of things going into the pro AV market, sort of working with some of the partners um, that can do streaming. Um, so people can work from home, still stream their content out and they can use professional equipment, professional cameras. Uh, so there, there is aspects of the business that we've been assessing and, and putting probably more um, reprioritizing uh, the engineering and the, the uh, contacts that we uh, need to work with uh, in that respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now, um, <clears throat> next, let's, to, uh, let's uh, zoom out a bit from coronavirus. Um, <clears throat> so, um, Craig, um, you're operating, I mean, internationally, but what are your key markets in Asia? Uh, Pacific region and and in these markets, which are the the major opportunities and and challenges for Bluefish for for for, please. Um, well, we've covered live sport and broadcasters and how that slowed down. What Fintan and Tom and Updesh have all pointed towards is this uh, AV market. So we have a re our our software is a recording device. At the moment, it's recording the signals that broadcasters are used to using. We are working on recording other signals and using the same workflow of editing those quickly. So we are taking a look at uh, recording streams. So well, that's our roadmap. And uh, a good example would be this Zoom meeting. So we could be recording this now and somebody could be editing it. And as soon as we're finished, they could have a highlights package and post that to social media. 
That's how quickly that could turn around. So that's a leverage of our technology. We're calling this sort of the AV market, if you like, but it's video conferencing. Everybody's using that. Right. So we want to take our technology broader. Um, and that's one workflow that we've identified. In Asia, once the sports, once the san uh, sanctions are lifted, we also see a fair amount of opportunity with esports. And um, it's just a, it's a live event. It's not a broadcast. It's a private uh, consortium or a private owner. And uh, people are going to want to watch live sporting events. Sorry, they're going to want to watch esports in the stadium, but also from home. So we want to be able to record and distribute that game, that event. Yeah. Interesting. That's coming back to live. Some of that's some of that's live. We see our we've actually already had deployments for our recording device in the house of worship market um, around the world, and we've got a lot of interest from the education market to record lectures, uh, just to record their events there, and same thing, quickly edit them and and share them with the students. So we see a lot of opportunity in the AV market for our technology that was developed for a broadcaster, but pushing it much more widely. Yep, we hope to work with uh, Updesh and Finton on that. We, we, had, we had plans to go to our trade show in Thailand, wasn't it, Finton? That was what, That's right, was yeah. So it was one of, one of the many uh, um, canceled trade shows of our last year, 2020. Yeah, so. That's where we think APEC will work for us. Okay, very, very interesting. What about IDEO? Um, what are the major um, opportunities for you in your key markets and which, which, which would you say are those key markets for you in Asia Pacific region? Um, we're, we're, we're lucky, we're kind of spread across uh, a wide kind of uh, footprint of Asia. So in, in one way that's at least enabled to keep us working in some areas. Um, and we're also spread across a wide uh, um, technology base as well in, in terms of our, our uh, customers. Um, so I mentioned earlier about hotels being kind of uh, yes. in, 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 in trouble, but we're you know, on, the, on the flip side, um, we do a lot in healthcare. Um, we, we provide a lot of um, IT systems uh, under loosely under AV, I would say, um, to the healthcare market. So we provide uh, nurse call systems for hospitals, uh, queuing systems for hospitals, uh, IT systems for hospitals. And of course, um, as a result of coronavirus, again, that that you know, uh, uh, there's been uh, a, a big uptick in the investment in uh, in healthcare infrastructure. So our healthcare business is obviously. Uh, uh, quite a, a strong and improving player, and we're just seeing we're, we're seeing that right now at the moment, um, and uh, um, you know uh, increase in the timelines for our existing projects and new projects coming out very quickly in in, in our healthcare space. Um, I, I mentioned about the the cloud uh, side, so. Um, very much, uh, we're seeing a dramatic uptake in 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 the interest of cloud systems, and and this is generated, uh, you know, initially from a, a, a disaster recovery and and a business continuity perspective, with a view to um, control rooms and broadcasters uh, maybe having transmission of COVID in in control rooms or in the broadcast facility, um, and. Uh, I think a lot of our customers, a lot of our customer base have been very impressed with the recent uh, changes in the capacity and capabilities of cloud-based broadcast systems. Uh, so we've been working uh, again with industry leaders in that space, uh, people like Sienna for their NDI cloud infrastructure um, and uh, um, companies like Bluefish as well uh, for for uh, signal transport and signal in and out and and uh, but uh, also um, BC Next uh, in Europe for for cloud playout and with the with the Sienna uh, capacity and the and the and the uh, BC Next capacity um, and our cloud infrastructure there. Uh, 
it's actually pretty comprehensive what we can do in the cloud now as opposed to what was possible even just a, uh, you know a year or two two years ago so we can we can move away from physical in infrastructure for most um, uh, production uh, and uh, archiving, media management, um, play out, automation, all that can be done in the cloud now uh, from a point of view of a, of a post-COVID world where, where um, you know, we still have to en send engineers on site when, when there's physicality involved. Obviously, there's, a, there's a, a benefit there. But we're also seeing the cost benefit, which was a struggle uh, in the past to, you know, we we spent, we're, we're on the back of spending three or four years uh, watching the bro key broadcast manufacturers uh, pushing uh, a move to IP and, and uh, standards like 702110 uh, yes. on the compressed. But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of those standards didn't, were not compatible with the cloud. So while they moved to IP, um, it wasn't really a cloud enablement strategy. Uh, using NDI in the cloud, we can now do switching. We can now do all the processing that we couldn't do uh, in that uncompressed uh, SCI space. So, you know, that for a lot of broadcasters, you imagine we're talking to broadcasters in countries that are under lockdown. Uh, you know, this is very, very interesting for them, not just for now, but it's become, I, I, I think, after the lockdowns end um, in our, in our uh, new normal, uh, because COVID doesn't really go away until we have a vaccine. Yeah. Uh, people are definitely going to look uh, favorably on systems that can be uh, remotely managed, remotely run. Um, and, th th you know, if we can show, uh, which we can, that these cloud-based systems are cost-effective to the existing um, hardware-based uh, uh, systems, uh, this is a very, very logical next step for broadcasters. So I think while we we've just witnessed a few years of pushing broadcasters to ip based technologies the next few years there will be uh, the broadcasters themselves will be pushing into the ip ip uh, ha has uh, really started to come of age and i think there will be a lot of broadcasters and media companies out there uh, will have late mover advantage here and will not move to IP. They'll go directly to cloud. Um, you know, obviously, everything doesn't go in the cloud. You know, we, still, we still have cameras and we still have to uh, get things from the real world, but uh, uh, there's an awful lot of infrastructure mm -hmm. that currently sits on underutilized servers uh, that could be much more efficiently running in the cloud. Um, and that someday in the future, we all hope that things like the Olympics will, will happen again. And when broadcasters are looking to do Olympic coverage, and I, my guess is when the next Olympics do happen, that companies will may, you know, we've seen in the past where a multi-channel operator might spin up 20 or 30 channels to cover the Olympics. Right. And that meant buying a lot of hardware, um, you know, channel in a box hardware, up, down, cross converters, audio handling, all of that. Um, I believe the next Olympics, most broadcasters will spin those channels up in the cloud they'll do the Olympics and they'll spin down afterwards and it'll be, you know, rather than worrying about the hardware, getting it delivered on time and then trying to figure out what to do with all that hardware after the Olympics, uh, it'll all be done in a virtual space. So I think COVID has catalyzed uh, in an accelerated way the move to cloud. Mm -hmm. Yes, Olympics are a good, good um, point to, to jump to next topic. Um, so... Um, next, we would like to talk about collaboration, uh, particularly ar around sports. So, um, Abdesh and Tom, um, I would like you to describe more closely um, uh, the recent project that, that um, Bluefish 444 and, and Ideal have been collaborating uh, together in uh, related to football in Malaysia. So, um, Abdesh, um, could you kindly um, describe a little bit this project more in detail and also um, Ideal's role uh, in this project, please? Okay, uh, just a bit of background. Uh, so, we started uh, working on uh, an ID Live production uh, like division uh, back in 2017. Uh, we started doing some live production uh, uh, mostly focusing on uh, college basketball. Uh, we even did some uh, live uh, uh, 
uh, 3D uh, virtual uh, events as well. Uh, one of which was uh, pretty large, uh, uh, which was doing, uh, which was in Hong Kong, uh, the rugby sevens. So that was done live uh, uh, on the virtual using the headsets. Uh, follow on from there, uh, uh, we started creating a service offering around live production. Uh, what we wanted to do was not just to replicate what was already in the market, but uh, offering something new with uh, new suppliers, uh, trying to use as much as uh, bleeding edge technology will allow. Okay, so right up to the edge. Mm -hmm. So it was high risk, but uh, uh, we, we felt this is the only way to sort of be in competition with the others. So some of the things we started doing even early as like 2017 was first thing we did was remote production. So most of, most of our productions were already remote from day one. Okay. Uh, uh, probably uh, the audio was remote, some of the control was remote, the graphics were remote. So as time went, we started introducing more and more uh, systems that were remote. Uh, we, we had no uh, network connectivity, so okay. we deployed a lot of bonded cellular uh, technology. So uh, many of these technologies were seen uh, by the uh, many other sports bodies to be very high risk, so they prefer to go with uh, traditional uh, ancient OB trucks, as I call them. Okay, so but uh, we never went that way. We focused on new breed technologies. One of which was, uh, uh, for example, was deploying uh, Ingestor, which was uh, from Bluefish. Uh, uh, one of the reason of uh, purpose of using the software was uh, the, the requirement was the uh, the requirement was uh, we wanted the ability to uh, get live feeds uh, immediately in front of an editor to be able to cut them and publish them into any platform okay so uh, so so what we did was uh, live remote production that fed uh, directly into ingestor uh, all the content uh, went on a shared NAS where we have about four to eight editors who access the content as the live feed is going on. Uh, we were able to cut it up and push it back into OB trucks for replays, push it back into social media, push it back into the cloud, uh, use it for half time, use it as picture in picture. So uh, one of the fastest thing we were able to do, uh, we have actually timed it, was uh, taking a live feed from a match, cutting it and pushing it back into the OB truck, uh, a third party OB truck for use during half time. So, so we can do like a 30 second or a one minute highlight clip in total of five minutes, ah, including cutting and pushing it back to the truck. Okay, which is in a completely different state. So, so the ability to speed this type of workflows were, were a major change. Uh, and I see uh, probably in the, in the new coming future uh, where uh, Craig mentioned there's, uh, there's a new uh, HTTP uh, workflow client, we should be even able to achieve this uh, remotely. That means uh, probably the editors uh, will be able to work remotely on a proxy and we right. should be able to publish this back. Okay, obviously, uh, when uh, football matches, the, the Malaysian Football League has been stopped for now. Uh, it may start, uh, we are expecting it to start uh, sometime in June. Uh, it will probably start with, into empty stadiums. However, they have plans to run more than one match in a day. So they'll probably run three or four matches back to back. Okay, so the, the, the method of engagement or, the, or how we do live will be completely different. Four back to back matches, which means eight hours of running uh, live cameras and also so the mechanism 
has to be completely different and and how we set up the teams and the workflows will will also be uh, we are we are in the in the, in the middle of uh, the discussing new ways of doing it as well mm -hmm. very interesting and this remote editing how you can collaborate then in a very um, efficient way uh, now tom um, what about you how would you describe um, bluefish role um, in the project with ideal Sure. So uh, I'll give you a little bit of background on on sort of the technology and the development and how how we work with um, with Updish uh, Ideal Systems on on this project because Ideal have been uh, working with us for for a very long time as as uh, Updish mentioned. Uh, basically, uh, Ingestor initially started out as a as an application uh, which can be downloaded free and uh, you can record to uncompressed formats. Uh, we offer a, uh, an upgrade for adding different codec options. So um, most most customers want to record to industry standard codecs like DNX HD or um, ProRes and uh, XDCAM and those kind of uh, industry standard uh, compressed formats just to save on disk storage and to save on uh, network bandwidth. So um, that that's sort of where Updash probably we. Um, we, we would have had contact and discussed how that might sort of help in uh, solving some of those uh, solu solutions for, for ideal systems. We actually offer the Ingestor um, system in a, in a server appliance now, um, but with okay. ideal having the technical uh, capacity uh, and the resources to, to build up their system, they, they uh, integrated that themselves. So they've uh, taken the Bluefish card, taken the software, uh, put all the pieces together, into a into a system themselves and integrated that into their workflow, and that workflow, as as, Ingest, as uh, Updish has mentioned, there is is basically he's described it uh, exactly how we sort of wanted wanted that to come across, and um, that's that's been based on lots of feedback as well from from uh, Ideal Systems with the earlier versions. So we we've, we've uh, optimized and added functionality um, to the Ingestor solution over over the years. Uh, but basically, that's a near live uh, editing uh, or near live uh, recording solution. So you can record your media, and uh, that media, when recorded to network attached storage, uh, can be accessed in a very, very short time frame. So uh, if there's a, an ongoing event, it could be sports, it could be a conference, or anything like this. We've had customers doing live conferences with multiple cameras, um, and the presenter would be uh, up on stage giving a giving a lecture or, or presenting, uh, though, those recordings can be made and uh, highlight packages can be put together in a very, very short time frame uh, and uploaded to uh, social media, put onto YouTube or different platforms, whatever the platform is. But the, the point is the efficiency and the speed. So you can record multiple feeds and you right. can access that media in a, in a very, very short time frame. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, what about the challenges? Um, Abdush already mentioned the connectivity. Uh, what would you say were the major challenges when you started this collaboration project? Uh, so I think we um, we we had to work out what uh, ideal systems wanted to, what format they wanted to record into, what kind of connectivity uh, their system was going to be uh, using. So our, our server, for example, uses 10 gigabit Ethernet. Um, but you can record a lot of uh, video formats over gigabit uh, connections as well. So the lower bandwidth codecs can go over over um, slower slower connections. So those kind of details uh, we've sort of worked over the years with um, with Ideal on on what what might be achievable on a, on a particular uh, system. So how 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 um, how many what kind of system you might need to run that? What kind of workstation computer? Uh, we've sort of worked collaboratively with uh, Updesh to make sure that that system is going to be able to achieve uh, the workflow that he's he's going to be uh, putting that into. Interesting. Now then, um, talking a little bit more about the collaboration between a technology supplier and a system integrator. So, um, how has your collaboration developed over time? And um, and as also technology moves on and also your uh, customers uh, technology transitions uh, advance so how has your relationship changed over the past let's say two years time 
Abdesh? Um, uh, basically, uh, Ideal Systems as a system integrator, we work with a lot of suppliers uh, who offer us uh, products and uh, equipment. Uh, but what happens is because we have uh, people on the ground who, who work uh, with the clients and the customers day in, day out, uh, we always uh, get first-hand information from uh, things like uh, new functionalities required or missing functionalities or things that can be enhanced. And most of this feedback is then channeled into our uh, supplier ecosystem, such as uh, Bluefish, where we have discussions uh, if a specific function uh, can be part of a roadmap, or is it going to be uh, released soon, or can we uh, push it uh, for quick development? So, so these are some of the discussions that we have uh, in, a, in a good partnership and and then obviously we then get uh, test systems we, we do tests for the benefit of uh, both parties and obviously then we try to turn it into uh, a commercial deployment so so these are uh, these are some of the the types of uh, things uh, or, or, or the relationship that uh, we try to create Rika, can I just add something there? Please, yeah. Yeah, I can remember meeting Finton and Updesh at IBC one year for the first time through our partner Media Proxy. And uh, Media Proxy Maker is also a Melbourne based developer in this industry, and they use Bluefish inside their server. And uh, Ideal Systems had deployed 200 channels throughout Asia, something like that, I think. Heaps. Is that, is that a furphy or? Or, yeah, or yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, Probably no, it's about right. <laughs> hundreds, I think, isn't it? Hundreds of channels. Yes, hundred. Well, yeah, more, more than actually. It's, 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 and yeah. the number, the numbers, the numbers been going up ever since. But uh, you know, just on, on that uh, and and the trade show and and linking linking Bluefish and COVID and Ideal all all into one. So there is a point at which uh, there's a there's a story here about the uh, about the consolidation in our industry too. So. Um, you know, even from an IABM perspective, you see uh, some of your larger constituent um, uh, members becoming one, you know, and, and, and almost there for a couple of years. Every year, another big manufacturer disappeared as it, as it got acquired. So you had Miranda, Grass Valley, Snell, uh, all, all kind of consolidating. And what, what happens in, in a lot of these cases is... Uh, as a system integrator and even the larger broadcasters, they lose their touch points with the manufacturers. Um, and, um, you know, one thing with, you know, specifically in relation to working with Bluefish and, and we'll, we'll put Media Proxy in there as well, is uh, there's, there's kind of a, a growing um, kind of uh, idea of, We've got independent broadcast manufacturers and then conglomerate broadcast manufacturers. Okay. Um, and how a system integrator works with those is, it can be quite different. So in, in certain cases with the conglomerate manufacturers, uh, we take their products and we put them into solutions. Whereas in, in the case with the uh, independent manufacturers, we actually talk to the customers, talk to the manufacturers and, and, and products emerge uh, closer to customer requirements and and we 've seen this specifically with Bluefish, where we work in collaboration with them and the end users uh, because typically end users in in the broadcast space especially um, there 's a lot of commonality in in the requirements and and by and large most broadcasters tend to move uh, in the same technology direction uh, more or less so you know if you have a leading broadcaster and and, and there 's always uh, there 's always people who are ahead on the bell curve, the adoption bell curve. So, you know, you work with the innovative uh, broadcasters who have new ideas and how to do things. And then you work with the innovative manufacturers. Uh, and and that's, this is where we see Bluefish. They, 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 they live, uh, I think with us on the, on the, on the on more on the sharp end of the innovation curve. Um, and uh, that's, 
that you know that's that's where we like to live basically you know we've been we've if if we don't innovate we don't add value so um you know that's that's uh, that's been the kind of defining part of our relationship with bluefish is uh, they they listen uh on occasion we listen um and uh, but uh, we and we hope our customers uh, are winners at the end of it i think uh what i'd like to add there too is that uh, ideal test our product that's what that i was saying earlier that's a code, that's a code name for trying to break it by the way <laughs> <laughs> you can't break your product well we got we we're supported you can, you can use a bluefish card multiple different ways in multiple different workflows because of the developers that have adopted our sdk over the years so Vinton, um sorry up dash here went to the trouble of testing our adobe premiere plugin extensively and then he and, he, and we've been supporting Adobe for 15 years. So he made a large scale deployment using Dell systems. They've tested our VizRT integration and deployed for sports graphics. Um, they've got compliance logging with, uh, with Media Proxy and Tom was holding it before the, our standards converter there. So uh, that was thoroughly tested by Ideal first to find out what feature set it would support, and then it was deployed largely. So that's the best way to work together. We're happy to lend equipment for it to be tested. Tell us what it does, what it's not doing. Give us the feedback, and we'll try and fix it. So that's how we've been working for five years, courtesy of our common common customer in Melbourne that we met, who and how we met Finton and Updesh at IBC many years ago. So those trade shows are useful. Even though we were in Amsterdam, we met somebody in Singapore and Malaysia who were just right next door, end up doing a lot of business together. That's good. <clears throat> Actually, I wanted to ask Tom still um, a bit more specifically that uh, that how your collaboration with with uh, Ideal has uh, has been working out, particularly in the field of um, Craig mentioned standards conversion and and also broadcast graphics and compliance logging uh, in these um, different I mean workflow solutions. How has your collaboration developed over time? And how, what kind of timeline are we talking about um, when you have been co-creating together? Sure. So uh, I think I struggle to remember exactly uh, when we first met uh, Ideal Systems, but yeah, we've been working together for quite some time now, and that's across uh, multiple different aspects of what Bluefish can offer. So as Craig mentioned, uh, one of the projects that uh, Updesh has worked on was a, a deployment of uh, the Bluefish Epoch Neutron uh, video card. So that's for uh, video output from uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. And during that time, um, some testing was done, uh, integrated into, into the systems, and then uh, testing for the specific customer requirements because they're, they are they can be quite broad and uh, some, some customers need specific features and functionality. Uh, whether whether that's uh, available um, just off the shelf or whether that might require uh, some investigation here or, or with with the customer uh, for that particular solution um, that was the case I believe for for um, a couple of the features that the customer wanted for that particular project but once once we delivered an updated uh, plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro I believe that uh, that was then deployed um, across multiple systems for that particular workflow a uh, very similar kind of uh, arrangement with the with the signal converters, but for a completely different uh, system. Uh, so the signal converters were taking HDMI feeds, I believe, and then uh, that converts to an SDI signal uh, to be um, to be recorded. Is that right, Updesh? Was that 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 project? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, accurate. So uh, the. Uh, there was another one which was the the synapse. I think I think we used a few hundred a uh, few hundred of them. Uh, that was uh, to feed into the media proxy uh, of a logging system, but uh, taking out feeds from uh, uh, about hundred and fifty set top boxes, uh, which are running twenty four seven, right? Uh, so uh, for that workflow. Uh, before implementing, uh, we did a lot of testing uh, with uh, various uh, brands uh, to check for ability, 
specifically for robustness, the ability to run uh, 24-7, uh, the heat, the ventilation uh, uh, of the of the units, and uh, the, the the result was uh, using the, the the best result came from the bluefish uh, synapse boxes. Interesting. Now, as we are running out of time, one more question for all of you: um, As the collaboration has been um, quite successful so far, are you planning to collaborate um, in the future? And are there any uh, any projects that you could share or or which are in your mind that where you would like to collaborate or which you are expected to to again team up Craig please I'm keen to have a go at this medical industry Finton <laughs> if you want a recorder in there want to record surgery uh, we do get some interest from time to time for developers uh, but yeah look we why why stop something that's successful so we keep in contact uh, three or four times a year at the various trade shows we see each other at and we exhibit together as well. So we'll, we'll keep working together and as long as there's a workflow opportunity, I think I think with our remote, our new features in Ingestor and the fact that we're taking them into multiple vertical markets uh, should be a good thing for Ideal to be able to exploit for us, I think. Okay, Fintan. Yeah, I mean, look, we... we, we um, we definitely see uh, a lot of opportunity um, to work. The, the good thing is having worked with Bluefish and I haven't seen how they operate and haven't seen how uh, adaptive they are. Um, it gives us kind of a, a, a you know strong idea. So, you know, one of the reasons we've been so effective, our AV business is relatively new. It's only uh, come on in the last four years. And I think one of the reasons we've been uh, very quick to grow that business to, to a sizable part of our business and, and grow our market share in a competitive market space is the mentality of going in and looking at AV projects uh, from the perspective of a solutions provider rather than just addressing it with existing boxes. So I think, I think uh, you know, our, our two big growth markets are in the cloud. Uh, cloud-based systems, but there's still a lot of in and out of the cloud, um, and uh, and the AV business uh, is growing uh, dramatically for us. Uh, but again, it'll be looking at um, customers' requirements rather rather than necessarily just trying to. Uh, what we see a lot of in the AV business is people just addressing it with uh, off-the-shelf. Uh, equipment and not really thinking about what customers are trying to do and thinking about how that can be done better. So uh, I think on, on the key business side, that's going to be it. It's going to that feedback loop working, working with manufacturers and, and, and looking uh, ahead on product roadmaps to see what those, what those products can be built into from a solution perspective. Mm -hmm. and what, what are the, at the level of technology, what are the major ambitions for Tom and Updash? Uh, coming up um, uh, I, I would say uh, in, uh, in particularly uh, the focus on uh, a lot of uh, IP and cloud based uh, technology as well as uh, major reskilling of uh, people in the uh, in ideal systems uh, basically from uh, from a lot of uh, legacy type of uh, engineering skill uh, and uh, moving them onto IP cloud-based type of uh, skill set. Okay, so so that is one of the 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 major uh, things that we will take on uh, uh, for uh, in in the in uh, starting from. Obviously, we have started a couple of years ago. But I think that needs to continue to evolve, uh, to to feed into new roadmaps, uh, new ways of working, especially. What about Tom? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I think I'd just like to basically add, and and this sort of goes into what Finton had, had already mentioned. I think about um, certain technologies moving to the cloud. So Bluefish, as I mentioned before, uh, we have. Um, quite a number of different integrations with different software solutions that, that do integrate with the cloud, but we're also working uh, on providing more offerings from the Ingestor workflow, for example. So that's 
to be able to be remote controlling uh, so people don't have to be necessarily on site um, and also the proxy kind of workflow where where things can be uploaded to the cloud then editors can access that from the cloud so that's a that's a remote production workflow uh, we also have on on the roadmap for um, for that product uh, different interfaces as Craig have mentioned so uh, with the addition of some uh, network uh, inputs uh, you can actually, uh, you'll be able to also record from uh, video feeds over video over IP standards that includes some of the SIMPTE standards, but also uh, NDI uh, streams as well. And then uh, beyond that, uh, potentially RTP, uh, SRT streaming uh, as an input. And then those same files can be recorded and uh, accessed by the editors uh, for, for very fast turnaround of content. So those things definitely right. feed back into um, integrating with cloud, cloud-based cloud solutions, whether it's remote editing or uh, just being a source that feeds into the cloud. Interesting and great conclusion for, the, for our panel. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. Um, we are very, uh, very happy to, to share all this information with our uh, member community and also we hope that your collaboration um, will continue as successfully as before and also we hope that your collaboration with the IABM continues successfully as, as before. Thank you so much for all of you and, and have a great uh, rest of the day.